Hi, my name is Zio Mora Lopez. I live in New Jersey. I've lived here since 1970. Uh, by profession, I am a medical technologist. I did everything from drawing blood to testing to preparing transfusions for patients in the hospital. And that's how I was exposed to HIV. Actually, I was exposed through a needle stick drawing blood from an AIDS patient back in 1993. And back then there was nothing they would do. Now we have options. Uh, back then there was nothing they could do. Basically you got stuck and you crossed your fingers and hoped for the best. Four months after that needle stick, I found out I had HIV. Currently I'm disabled after effects and side effects of um, having HIV for 27 years. Currently I'm, like I said, disabled, but I am volunteering with an aid service organization in New Jersey called Buddies of New Jersey. They provide a full range of services from case management, medical case management, um, pharmacy uh, support, uh, mental health support, substance abuse support. Uh, they do testing, they do PrEP, they do PEP, all services having to do with HIV. And I've been volunteering them with them for four years. And they valued my uh, knowledge and my um, you know history with uh, within the uh, organization and asked me to become a board member. Buddies basically has gone mostly remote. Uh, during the, the shutdown here in New Jersey, they were 100% remote. The, the office itself was closed. Mental health and everybody was working remotely uh, by cell phone and by uh, Zoom. Even mental health was being done by Zoom appointments, you know, hourly, you know, five days a week. The patients were still being uh, followed and supported, but just not in person. And I, you know, being on the board, I have put my phone out uh, for people to, to you know, reach out to me. I'm, I'm here to be their voice. This being, you know, online only is really um, disconnected. And it's not like people don't care about you and are not trying to provide you the same services. They are physically not able to, to, to see you and, and, and be present with you in the same place. When you're a person living with HIV, you need that physical connection. It's been rough, even though the services are being provided. It's just until we're back in person, it's, it's, there's a disconnect. I've been blessed in that uh, COVID hasn't personally, you know, taken anybody that I know of, uh, like a family member or something like that. But I have had COVID, you know, scares. I have become like, you know, an, an avid news watcher. And basically anybody that says they're going to have Fauci on, I'm going to listen to Fauci. So whatever he has to say, whatever questions he asks, I mean, he's literally asked, answered questions that I've been thinking about that day on a news show. And I'm like, thank you. It's like you're talking directly to me. But avidly watching this progress, um, a lot, same as my HIV has progressed over 27 years and the knowledge and the treatment and, and ideas of it, I've seen COVID uh, science progress, but in a year as opposed to decades with HIV. parent of a 20 of a 20 year old so you know she's just having just having a social life just totally shut off uh at first she she's like she couldn't really get the idea of you know why can't my friends come over or, or why can't I go to my friend's house and I literally sat her down at the kitchen table and said to her one day simply put you're young and you're healthy I had her after I had HIV and she's HIV negative she is a healthy young woman I said you're young you're healthy you get COVID you probably be fine you bring it home to me I could possibly end up in the hospital, maybe even die. So yeah, unfortunately it sucks to be here, but we gotta take care of keeping this out of the house. And even with that in mind, she ended up getting COVID. She had a fever and she had a headache and then she had diarrhea and then she had nausea. And well, I mean, she came home on Monday. I'm like, you stay on one side of the house. I'll stay on the other side of the house. I'm wearing a mask. We're Cloroxing everything. And I tested a week after she tested. And I tested negative. So, you know, that kind of goes to show you that, you know, isolating and keeping your distance and, you know, kind of obsessive um, sanitizing of surfaces with Clorox wipes and, and uh, wearing a mask in the house. I mean, we're sitting, I'm cooking her a meal and I'm wearing a mask in the house. If I was out of my bedroom, I had a mask on. And that kept me safe. Absolutely. I mean, the um, 
the prejudices there the prejudices with hiv or anybody in the gay community anybody who uh, uses drugs anybody who's a sex worker um they they are you know um prejudiced people are prejudiced and, and horrible to them thinking that they're the they're the reasons that this has spread and anybody who is asian is getting that now and you know people with hiv could not disclose people who are asian have no choice in it but by the same token opposite there is isn't the prejudice against a person who has the disease or had the disease as much where so many people go i did all the right things and i still got it there's just a moment of um not being on guard and it happens and that's common for both diseases some people who got gotten covid are embarrassed they got it like hey there were all the warnings there were all the different things that they told us to do and not to do and i still got it and so many people who are living with hiv feel the same way too Yeah, I mean, I had a mild headache and I had, and I was kind of achy all over for a few days after the second shot, but I was literally in bed with fever, severe body aches, shakes, you name it with Shingrix vaccine. And COVID was nothing. It was it was great. I had the the Pfizer vaccine. So it's like, okay, the near anxiety I felt every day going outside before I had the vaccine isn't there anymore. It's like I'm still wearing my mask. I still have my hand sanitizer. I still do what I was doing, but in the back of my head that panic, that near panic has lessened. Anybody living with HIV you knows stress is is bad for the immune, uh, immune system. So lessening stress lessens that uh, impact on your immune system and keeps you healthier. And now that I have the, you know, the the two vaccines, it's like, okay, we got this. Even if I do get exposed and even if I do get the disease, it's not going to be life or death. Okay. And starting to move forward, you know, like feeling okay, let's go out and do what I have to do. I don't have to put it off.